Now, James Dillingpole from The Telegraph has written quite a lot about articles about the con of global warming and the climate change stuff and so on. And he says here, uh, U.S. physics professor, global warming is the greatest and most successful pseudoscientific fraud I've seen in my long life. And this was a rehash of something that came out before, but he put it out again because it's so important and pertinent to what's happening. It says, um, Harold Lewis is emeritus professor of physics at the University of California, Santa Barbara. He is, in his letter of resignation to Curtis G. Gallen, Jr., Princeton University, president of the American Physical uh, Society. Here is his letter of resignation. And this is, this is what he said. This is an important moment in science history. I would describe it as a letter on the scale of Martin Luther nailing his 95 thesis to the Wittenberg church door. It's worthy of repeating this letter in entirely, entirety on every blog that discusses science. It's so utterly damning that I'm going to run it in full without further comment. It says here, Dear Kurt, when I first joined the American Physical Society uh, 67 years ago, it was much smaller, much gentler, and yet uncorrupted by the money flood, a great threat against which Dwight Eisenhower warned a half century ago. Indeed, the choice of physics as a profession was then a guarantor of a life of poverty and abstinence. It was World War II that changed all that. The prospect of worldly gain drove few physicists. As recently as 35 years ago, when I chaired the first APS study of a contentious uh, social scientific issue, the reactor safety study, though there were zealots uh, aplenty on the outside and there was no hint of inordinate pressure on us as physicists, we were therefore able to produce what I believe was and is an honest appraisal of the the situation at that time. We were further enabled by the presence of an oversight committee consisting of P.F. Panofsky, uh, Vicky Weisskopf, and Hans Beth, all towering physicists beyond reproach. I was proud of what we did in a charged atmosphere. In the end, the oversight committee, in its report to the APES president, noted the complete independence in which we did the job and predicted that the report would be attacked from both sides. What greater tribute could there be? How different it is now. The giants no longer walk the earth, and the money flood has become the reason de true of much physics research, the vital sustenance of much more, and it provides a support for untold numbers of professional jobs. They'll live on grants, you see. For reasons that will soon become clear, my former pride at being an APS fellow at these years has been turned into shame, and I'm forced with no pleasure at all to offer you my resignation from the society. It is, of course, a global warming scam with literally trillions of dollars driving it that has corrupted so many scientists and has carried the APS before it like a rogue wave. It's the greatest and most successful pseudoscientific fraud I have seen in my long life as a physicist. Anyone who has the faintest doubt that this is so should force himself to read the Climate Gate documents which lay bare and Montford's book organizes the facts very well. I don't believe that any real physicist, nay scientist, can read that stuff without revulsion. I would always make that revulsion a definition of the word scientist. So what, what has the APS as an organization done in the face of this challenge? It has accepted the corruption as the norm and gone along with it. For example, about a year ago, a few of us sent an email on the subject to a fraction of the membership. APS ignored the issues, but the then president immediately launched a hostile investigation of where we got the email addresses. In its better days, APS used to encourage discussion of important issues, and indeed the Constitution cites that that it is its principal purpose. No more, everything that has been done in the last year has been des- designed to silence debate. The appallingly t- tendentious APS statement on climate change was apparently written in a hurry by a few people over lunch and is certainly not representative of the talents of APS members as I have long known them. So a few of us petitioned the council to reconsider it. One of the outstanding remarks of indistinction in the statement was the poison word incontrovertible, which describes few items in physics, certainly not this one. In response, APS obtained a secret committee that never met, never troubled to speak to any sceptics, yet endorsed the statement in its entirety. They did admit that the tone was a bit strong, but amazingly kept the poison word 
incontrovertible to describe the evidence, a position supported by no one. In the end, the council kept the original statement word for word, but approved a far longer explanatory screed, admitting that there were uncertainties, but brushing them aside to give blanket approval to the original. This original statement, which still stands as the APS position, also contains what I consider pompous and asinine advice to all world governments. That's interesting, to all world governments. As if the APS were masters of the universe. It is not, and I am embarrassed to think that our leaders seem to think it is. This is not fun and games. These are serious matters involving vast amounts of our national substance, and the reputation is at stake. Three, in the interim, the climate gate scandal broke into the news and the machinations of the principal alarmists were revealed to the world. It was a fraud on a scale I have never seen, and I'd lack the words to describe its enormity. Effects on the APS position, none. None at all. This is not science. Other forces are at work, and that's true. So a few of us tried to bring sciences into the act, that is, after all, the alleged and historic purpose of APS, and collected the necessary 200-plus signatures to bring the Council a proposal for a a topical group on climate science, thinking that open discussion of the scientific issues in the best tradition of physics would be beneficial to all and also a contribution to the nation. I might note that it was not easy to collect the signatures since she denied us the use of the APS membership list. You see how a tight shop it is? It's a must-be, you see. Nothing's to change this, no matter what happens. Even a deep freeze isn't to change it. But I'll put these links up for you to read in full on cuttingthroughthematrix.com at the end of the show. Back with more after this. Folks, we're back and we're cutting through the matrix. And just to finish off, something in the same vein that's come out from New Zealand, and it's a video you can watch it for yourself. But it's a, that's, it's called a legal defeat for the global warming in Kiwi Gate scandal. It verifies what Dylan Paul said last week when he said that um, the new findings are coming out. We'll find, and from the Bilderbergers too, of course, who had global cooling down their agenda. He said, watch them distance themselves, all the, the big governments and so on, from the conmen. And it says, legal defeat for global warming in Kiwi Gate scandal. In the climate controversy dubbed Kiwi Gate, the New Zealand skeptics inflict shock courtroom defeat on climatologists implicated in temperature data fraud. So at least in, in, in New Zealand, they t- put them on trial and they were found guilty. So New, New, New Zealand's government via its National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research, NIWA, has announced it has nothing to do with the country's official climate record and what commentators are calling a capitulation from the tainted uh, climate reconstruction. The story is also covered on web news aggregator site uh, icecap.com. It says, NIWA's statement of defense claims they were never responsible for the national temperature record. Uh, the climb down is seen as a legal triumph for skeptics of the New Zealand Climate Science Coalition who had initiated their challenge last August when petitioning the High Court of New Zealand to uh, invalidate the Weather Service's reconstruction of Antipodean temperatures as poles. Pole. So it says the, the petition may be read, and it gives you the link. You can read it yourself. According to the August statement of the claim from NZCSC, climate scientists cooked the books by using the same alleged trick employed by British and American scientists. This involves subtly imposing a warming bias during what is known as the homogenization process that occurs when climate data needs to be adjusted. The specific charge brought against the Kiwi government was that its climate scientists had taken the raw temperature records of the country and then adjusted them artificially with the result that a steeper warming trend was created than would otherwise exist by examination of the raw data. So they copied it exactly as it was the, the, the East Anglia University boys who were getting millions of bucks poured into their research for all their lies that they were putting out. It's a political agenda, right? 
So indeed, the, key, the original Kiwi records show no warming during the 20th century, but after government-sponsored climatologists had manipulated the data, a warming trend of 1 degree centigrade, centigrade appeared. And it says, um, the NZCSC story reports that the New Zealand authorities formally stated that, in their opinion, they are not required to use the best available information, <laughs> nor to apply the best scientific practices and techniques available at any given time. They don't think that forms any part of their statutory obligation to pursue excellence. So pursuing the truth is, is, doesn't really matter to these scientists. They will pursue the answer that their masters that pay them through the grants want. That's what they pursue. And it says Niwa now denies there was any such thing as an official NZ temperature record. Uh, so, so in other words, the government is literally distancing themselves from these uh, advisory uh, gut professionals. They were going to change. I wonder if they'll take the fart tax away as well, because all New Zealand farmers paying the fart tax for CO2. Maybe they should blow that up as well. That would be quite an explosion in the sky, wouldn't it? Well, from Hamish, myself, and Ontario, Canada, it's good night to me, your God or your God's go with you. <laughs>